felt in in Aspen and in, in the area, and, and what were people saying at the time? Oh boy, you know it's the thing. I was I was a working journalist, and I didn't linger much then. I was not living in Aspen at the time. I was living down Valley in Glenwood Springs. Um, I did spend a lot of time in Aspen beforehand, but. Uh, I didn't have time to fiddle around. It's like you guys today, you get in, you get the pictures, you go back. I had to go back and develop the shots. Uh, it, there was a tremendous buzz around this whole thing, you know, and, and uh, uh, it, was, it was just an air of excitement about the whole thing. This, is put, this put Aspen square on the media map, right center, dead center. And uh, I, I guess I know I, I read also of accounts that women were lining up to buy and buy handguns, but I didn't see that personally, you know. But uh, you hear things uh, from different places, but uh, I don't know if I can fill any more than that in for you. So. And and through all of this, I mean, the fact is that these families, and I know many of them, rightfully so, have chosen to remain silent all these years. But I can't imagine with that, this being brought up again, kind of, you know, the families of these women and their friends through now that this is kind of back out there? Well, I, I think that um, it must be very difficult for them, and I, and I feel for them. And, I, and, I, uh, and I can, people should uh, aim their prayers that way. Uh, Ted is beyond redemption. Uh, uh, he, um, I believe, in the final reckoning, and he, and he had his, and, and, and not just the one in Florida. Um, I, I think that there they're within their rights to deny wanting to grind this over again. It was a very painful time in their lives, and it's almost like somebody who is going to be, um, uh, somebody has to go back constantly to parole hearings in a way, but there's, there's no more offender. I mean, it's, a, it's kind of an odd place to be put in, so I, I, I feel for them. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't think they, like I said, I, I tucked them away and uh, that's about it. It was, a, it, was a, it was a big story at the time and uh, I guess I, I just don't, I, I don't want to get Ted Bundy into my mind any more than he has been already. He, I thought a lot about it last night and, and uh, I thought about the, the victims and, and uh, didn't sleep all that well. Bundy kind of gets into your head. Not really. We didn't know, of course, uh, until they started putting all the pieces together. And uh, you no, know, we our, our office was right across the street from uh, our, our newspaper office in Glenwood Springs was was right across the street, uh, a literal stone's throw. I mean, uh, to the to the Garfield County Jail, and uh, and again, he, he he was acting in a disarming fashion. Didn't like his accommodations, but. He, he starved himself down to uh, whatever he could possibly, as, as much as he could, greased himself up and knocked out a, uh, uh, a one-foot square lighting fixture and, and wormed his way over the top uh, mechanical areas into a, into a um, jailer's apartment, changed clothes, hit the road, and went on the way to, uh, to Hall Tallahassee. And, uh, but I didn't realize, and the, the Netflix special put it out, I thought he went directly to Tallahassee where he took a long detour and created havoc a little bit farther out west, and then he went down to Tallahassee and 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 uh, killed those Chi Omega girls. So it was just uh, it was just terrible. But at that point, it was two died and three were severely injured, and it was it was a serious time. They, I think, by that point, the demon within him had gotten so repressed and without the blood loss that they that he just went crazy, and then that's what finally did him in. So. Yeah, they had, he had been. <coughs> yeah, he had he had escaped. He had jumped out the courthouse, and then he, they'd they'd picked him up in town. Uh, one of the police officers is shown in the Netflix film. They picked him up in town, and um, the um, uh, and 
the picture I took was when he was going up to court after he was he was bring, they were bringing him up to court to be advised, and, they, and then after that he, they were they were descending the staircase, and that's that's when we took the shot. And that, a lot of people did. No, I think that's a fair question. And actually, there was a lot of incompetence in Colorado. I mean, this man should never have been set free without leg chains or something up there. But he talked his way out of things. They, uh, they, were, uh, it was, they weren't monitored. Of course, the, uh, the monitoring technology, was. these are pretty primitive jails in those days, you know. And monitoring technologies are not what they are today. But they still didn't really understand how dangerous the man was, you know, I don't think. And even at the end, I know when, when I interviewed uh, then District Attorney, when, when I took pictures of then District Attorney Frank uh, Tucker, who was in charge of the case, after after Bundy's escape, he sort of likes uh, something along the lines of "farewell, Ted" or something like that, or uh, "bon voyage." I can't recall it. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but but basically, it was. Uh, he wasn't appropriately somber, I don't think. This, uh, but again, that's then. This is now. You know. So, but people don't know, don't know until they see the the, de the depth of his real depravity. <laughs> and other Absolutely. And is there anything else that you wanted to add or make sure that that people take away from this? Because we're kind of, you know, our story is focusing on the Colorado connection. Yeah. The fact that you know what yeah. was maybe kind of lost. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to add or make sure people are, you know, aware of that maybe they didn't hear before? Yeah, don't, don't lionize this guy as a, as a master criminal because he wasn't necessarily. He was a very cunning criminal. He was uh, very, very dangerous, and that's all I'd like to say about him. And um, I think the danger in doing that is you might uh, ramp up some enthusiasm among copycats. So that's a danger always. I think. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And I have to ask, so were you, how old were you when you took those photos? Were you... Um, well, I was, I was 30 years old when I first, uh, when I was driving the cab and saw her, and I saw that first saw Karen Campbell's picture, and, and 32 when I, uh, when I was uh, shooting those pictures in 77. I'm 74 now. <laughs> 74 now? Yeah. Yeah, I retired from, uh, I spent, uh, oh, from about 2004, I think it was, to 2013, I think, roughly, at the, uh, at the Daily Republic in Mitchell, Mitchell, South Dakota, the home of the world's only corn palace. <laughs> It's, it's pretty bizarre, really. I didn't put the two pieces together till later, but uh, uh, it made sense then. So, 